Hello, my dear ones. After almost two weeks of constant or almost constant rain, it feels so nice to be outside and to, to breathe fresh air and to just look around and remind myself how beautiful, how beautiful God's creation is. And, um, and I include all of you in that creation. It's useful to remind ourselves that we are part of God's creation and that His creation has the potential to be nothing except good, beautiful, and eventually perfect as our Father in heavens is perfect. I want to talk to you a bit today about a temptation that comes from from advancing spiritually. It's a paradox, but we are used to paradoxes by now. In the Orthodox Church, everything is a paradox. Um, the more we advance spiritually, the less we feel that we have made any progress. The grace that we were given initially at the beginning of us turning back to Christ and re-entering the Orthodox Church and receiving again the sacraments of the Church, that grace is being lifted, or at least we perceive it as being lifted, because that there comes a time when God wants us to, to learn how to deal with temptations. He wants us to learn how to act with love and compassion. He wants us to at least try to fight the battles that he has been fighting for us at the very beginning of our spiritual life. <sighs> There's a story in the life of St. Sisoes the Great, who is one of the protectors of our little chapel, St. Brandon the Navigator and St. Sisoes the Great, the wonderful, wonderful ascetic from Egypt. There's a story in his life that when he grew older, and physically weaker, he left his cave. He had been in St. Anthony's cave for 72 years. And when he became too old and too frail to live in St. Anthony's cave, he moved lower down into the desert. And there's a story that one day as he was lying on his bed, in his cell with his disciple, they heard a knocking at the door of his cell. And Saint Sisoes, the great saint, perceived spiritually who it was who was knocking. And he asked his disciple to go to the door, not open the door, but tell the one who's knocking. Sisoes is the same. I am Sisoes in my bed. I am Sisoes on the mountain. And immediately the knocking disappeared and he who was knocking vanished. This was, of course, the devil. This was, of course, the devil trying to see if somehow old age or physical weakness has weakened the spirit of the great saint as well. And he was knocking, trying to scare him, to frighten him away. But this answer of a saint, Sisoes on the mountain, Sisoes on the bed, tells us that ultimately we have to reach a stage and a state, a spiritual state, where regardless of what happens around us, if we are healthy, if we are sick, if we are strong, if we are weak, if we are young, if we are old, regardless of the outside context of our lives, our spirit has to be unshakable in Christ. I am Sisoes on the mountain. I am Sisoes on the bed. And the devil immediately vanished, fearful himself at the great saint. Now we read these stories and then we look back onto our lives and we think, oh dear God, Perhaps it would be better not even to read these things anymore because there comes a point when, instead of being strengthened by reading them, they push us into despondency because we perceive the great chasm between them and us, between their spiritual reality and our spiritual reality. But, but my brothers and my sisters, 
forget the miracles that God gives us at the beginning of our spiritual life. Forget them, not in the sense of actually forgetting them, but forget the fact that this is what we would like to see. That's not a deep spiritual life. That's almost like a show that God allows us to see in order to strengthen us at the beginning of our spiritual life. But what we need to acquire by the end of our life here on earth is an instinct of the direction in which we should be moving. Christ is not going to condemn us if we do not reach the level of St. Anthony the Great or St. Cicerus the Great or St. Xenia of St. Petersburg or St. Catherine the Great Saint of Sinai. Christ is not going to condemn us if we do not realize the fullness of our potential while we are still here in this life. Christ will look at the things in which he will find our soul. And if he finds our soul trying to move closer to him, moving one simple step at a time, one humble step at a time, moving towards him in the correct direction, if he finds us in this attempt to be one with him, he will judge us in what he has found us. And we shall be saved. The more we read about the lives of the saints, the more we see the miracles that they were given, the more we are in awe of their spiritual battles and their spiritual fights against the enemy, against the evil one, the more our lives become entangled somehow in their lives. There's a process where we move from a life which is entirely caught up in this world, in the humans of this world, and slowly, slowly, almost unperceivably to us, we move into another realm where we are surrounded by other human beings, the ones who are now saints in the kingdom of heaven. And instead of dealing with the fallenness of our brothers and sisters here and our own fallenness here, we are dealing with the sanctity, the holiness of our brothers and sisters in heaven and our fallenness compared to them. That's why as we grow closer to God, as we grow closer in this communion with the saints, instead of feeling better about ourselves, we end up feeling worse about ourselves because we are surrounded by saints. We are no longer surrounded exclusively by the examples of our fallen brothers and sisters in this world. Compared to them, we are just as good or just as bad. Sometimes we are actually better than they are, and that feeds our pride. But when we slowly graduate from this fallen class, and we are entering humbly and quietly and in awe the class of the saints, the kingdom of the saints, compared to them, we shall never be better and we shall never even be equal. We are always going to be lower than them. And this, of course, feeds our humility, our humbleness. And this, of course, kills our pride because there's nothing to feed our pride anymore. And all of a sudden, from being maybe one of the best students in the fallen classroom of this world, we end up being the worst students in the amazing classroom of the saints. But it is better to be the last in the kingdom of God than to be the first among the fallen ones. I have a feeling if you read the gospel with this lens in your heart and in your mind, you will see that the fathers who are teaching us to look at ourselves through this lens were perfectly right. 
Saint Sophroni of Essex tells us not to let go of the perfection of the saints, not to stop looking at their examples, but to look at them as if they are stars somewhere up in the skies. And we know, we are fully and painfully aware that we cannot reach out and grab it and make that star our own. But by looking at that star, we make certain that we move in the right direction, that we do not lose our life, we do not waste the time of our life by moving to the right side, to the left side, up and down and everywhere around, until we get into our 50s and 60s and 70s and, and even later and we realize, oh, I've just wasted my life following nothing but my pride. Instead, we have this example, this perfect star of the life of the saints. And even if it's painful, because we know we cannot reach out and grab it, even if it's painful and humbling, at least by looking straight at their example, and being surrounded by the community of the saints, slowly, slowly, at least we know that the humble steps that we make are steps we make in the right direction. Feed this instinct in you that you know what the truth is and you, you are indeed serving the truth. Feed this humility in you, this holy suffering in you that might kill your pride but acts as a guiding light for you, taking you through the desert of your life the way that pillar of light was guiding Israel through the desert towards the promised land. Do not abandon the saints and you are going to win these battles too. Not because of your own strength or because of my own strength, but because the saints themselves, as long as we are surrounded by their community, they are fighting for us. And they are going to give us the crown of victory. Because we might perceive ourselves as failures in relation to them. We might feel humble in relation to them, but how humble must they feel in relation to the perfect one, Christ our God. I am Sisoes on the mountain and I am Sisoes on the bed. We might not be ever ever be able to say those words in the honesty and truth of our spirit. But I can say, Sisoes is the same on the mountain. Sisoes is the same on his bed. By the prayers of Saint Sisoes, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. And through the prayers of St. Sisoas, and through his strength, and through his perfection, I know, I am confident that I also shall be forgiven, that I also shall defeat the evil one, and I also shall be saved. Not through me and because of what I am able to do before God but through the prayers of St. Sisoas and St. Nicholas and St. Isaac and St. Oren and all the wonderful, wonderful saints who are now my community, my classroom. Don't worry, the saints are full of love. They are one with God who is love. They will take care of their humble, silly, idiotic classmates, me and you, 
and they will fight for us and they will pray for us as long as we do not abandon, as long as we make one humble step at a time in the right direction, they will surround us and they will fight for us. Be blessed, my brothers and my sisters. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. Amen.